good morning, Mount Olive and the world. We're coming to you from the sanctuary of the Mount Olive Baptist Church, 131 South on Tyson in good old Mount Pleasant, Texas. We are here to, be, to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And if you have your worship sheet with you, we are about to hear from our director of music, Brother Green, with a selection.
truth shall make us free. Someday, my God of glory, the truth shall make us free. Yes. Someday. Thank you, Brother Green, on this eve of the 34th annual MLK Amen. Day. Amen. Amen. And more about that later, but we thank God for that selection. Our scripture reading is coming from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 1 through 2. If you have your worship sheet or your Bible, let us read it together. Yet now he, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen, thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not. O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. May God add a blessing upon the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. A new word, a new title, a new name for the children of Israel, Jeshurun, which is the same as a revelation of Jesus. Let us bow together. It's prayer time, morning prayer time. Father God, we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor on this, in this worship occasion and worship experience that those who may see and hear my voice might be able to have the blessings of your presence and that their spiritual needs might be met. For when our spiritual needs are met, all of the other needs will follow suit. Now, Lord, we give you glory, and we ask that you will receive this worship and praise yes. unto thee, the only true and living God, from these your servants, wherever they are. Yes. And we do it in the name of your only begotten Son, yes. Jesus the Christ. In his name, in his name, in his name, do we ask these blessings and give these things. And all of God's children say, amen. It's announcement time, and as I mentioned earlier, this is the eve of the 34th annual Martin Luther King Day. It's amazing how time has passed since that first event. But I want to tell you, before I go any further on the announcements, that even though, and it's in the paper as well, the, the My Pleasant Ministers Union had canceled their annual march and, and celebration service, we are having an event sponsored by Pilgrim's Pride, Pilgrim's Industries, the Mount Pleasant Ministers Union, along with several other uh, community groups, NAACP, the TCAA, are going to partner with Pilgrims. And on Monday, on tomorrow at 10 o'clock, Pilgrims will be supplying uh, lead quarters to feed the community lead quarters to feed the community. First come, first serve. And we will be set up on the, in the parking lot of the Mount Island Baptist Church near, near uh, Taylor Street. So, at 10 o'clock, line up, and it'll be drive-through only. COVID guidelines will be strictly adhered to. Social distance, you do not get out of your cars, just drive up, and we'll see to it that you will receive the gift provided by Pilgrims. 
thank God for that partnership, and we thank God for our, our sister age, uh, uh, groups, community groups, and we look forward to seeing you there tomorrow at 10 a.m. Now, on January the 20th, January the 20th, I hope everyone knows what day that's going to be. That will be Wednesday, and it will be the inauguration of the newly elected vice president, the president and vice president of the United States. I don't have to tell you about all the, all the uh, things that are associated with it and what's happening in Washington, D.C. But I do want to tell you this. Whether you look at it on TV, whatever you do, make sure you pray for the peace of this nation. Because of all the recent events that have happened, this nation needs healing. And the only way it can, it can be healed is, as the Lord said to Solomon, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, Humble themselves and pray. That's what we want to do. So let's do that. Let's call that a day of prayer for the nation. Now, COVID-19 is rising in the community. We have quite a few active cases. You continue. Do not, even if you have gotten the vaccine, do not lay down your COVID rule. Because there's so many others that haven't gotten it. And we're still studying, studying about the effects of it. So, wear your mask, social distance, wash your hands. And I'm standing in line with my sleeve rolled up. I, I've, been I've been telling those with us this morning, Sister Woods and Reverend Watson and, and Brother Green, that my sleeve has been rolled up ever since they sent out the first vaccines. And I'm waiting, I'm on waiting list all over town. So I encourage you, I very strongly encourage you to do that, to, to receive. If we're going to come out, this is, I believe, God's answer to bringing us out of the pandemic. May God bless you and may he keep you. Brother Green is coming with another selection.
prophecy of Isaiah chapter 40 verses 28 through 31 and Bible scholars know this I'm sure by hand I mean by mine, by mine in their mind verse 28 shall we together hast thou not known hast thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faint not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the young, young, the youth rather, shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles and shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Yes, Lord. May God add a blessing upon the readers of his word and certainly the doers of his word. Yes. What a powerful prophecy. And I see it playing out, my brothers and sisters. I see it playing out not only in the earlier time, but right now. It's prayer time. It's time that we would gather together if you were here in the sanctuary and we would gather in our groups and pray. Wherever you are, join hands with your loved ones and your friends and let's bow together to the everlasting Lord. Father God, the one who made heaven and earth, yeah. we solemnly bow before you because we recognize that you are sovereign. You are the ultimate. Yeah. You are the first cause. You are the only constant. You are infinite. 
And so we bow because we realize that without you, we could do nothing. Yeah. Father, as we come before you, we want to thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for all the wonderful blessings that we don't deserve. Yeah. And oh, how you've taken care of us and provided for us. Even during these dreary times, you still sustain us. Yeah. Oh, Lord, let us put our eyes upon you and our hope within you. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, as we, we come to pray for this, this nation, being confronted by challenges that we've never seen before. But Lord, thou art God, and we know there's no power greater than your power. For you said to your son Jesus, I have overcome the world. So Lord, we ask that you would bless this, this nation. First, to recognize you. Secondly, to recognize one another. And thirdly, to realize that we are all under your care. Yeah. Your peace, your unity. We pray for the incoming administration of the president and vice president and all the cabinet members. Yeah. And then Lord God Almighty, we also pray for the outgoing president and ask that you would, you would guide him into the way of your righteousness. Father, in your name, I mean the name of, rather, of your son Jesus, we know you are able to grant these blessings. Yeah. Now, Lord, every day there's a record being set of the number of people infected with COVID and the number who have succumbed to it. Lord, all the many families that are grieving, and all the many, many families and persons in the hospitals and, and, and health facilities all over this country, we know that you're going to bring us through. Oh, yeah. We know that, Lord. Yeah, God. So help us to hold out and hold to your unchanging hand. Yeah, God. Yeah. Yes, we bless this nation that we do not lose hope and let our faith grow stronger every day. And then, Lord, in the meantime, we'll give you the praise and we'll give you the glory. Yes, God. Now, for those that are, un that are under my voice, the sound of my voice, and from this electronic output, mm -hmm. have them know whoever they are and where they are that they have a responsibility to tell me that there is hope. Yes, there is a reality yeah. in serving the true and living God. And we ask for your peace, not only for inauguration, but for this country overall throughout the days to come. Come and be with us this morning as we provide or present your word to our people and may their hearts be gleaned by your word, or uh, gleaning in your word. We give you glory, Lord. Oh, yes, we give you praise, Lord. We just thank you because we know it's already done. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That saving name of Jesus. That almighty, powerful name of Jesus. That name that is the Prince of Peace. We say, Amen. Amen. God bless you and may God keep you. Amen. Well, we're ready for the hymn of the morning. The Christian's anthem. That age old bull of Christian hope called Amazing Grace. Brother Green is going to lead us. How sweet the sound. Yes.
That's it. Sing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet. Oh, hallelujah. The sound. tell you that our subject is very short. Now I didn't say the sermon but I said the subject. Amen. But I'm going to try to be uh, as uh, expeditious as possible because we have a time frame but I wish I could preach this like I feel it already. Mm. The subject is, but not. But not. And it's from Isaiah 43 and verse 1. And if you know, we have everything, every scripture we dealt with this morning has come from the prophecy of Isaiah and from a section of Isaiah that not only has God the condition of Israel, but also God's plan for Israel. Mm -hmm. And in so be his plan for us. Mm -hmm. Verse 1, let's read it. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by my name. And this is the last three words. Thou art mine, or you are mine. By way of introduction, let, let's talk about some of the terminology of this subject, but now. The word but is a conjunction. And it 
during the days when I was uh, in school, grade school, and, and even in high school, I, I liked grammar, English. But many times, I didn't pay as much attention as I should have. But if you have kids, youngsters, and I, and I got some grands, some great grands, and so I get to see some of these cartoons and all this stuff they got now, you know. But one in particular that I, that I latched on to when some of the grands were at the house right. was this one that was teaching the parts of speech in a, in, a, in, a, in a cartoon fashion. And they got to talking about conjunction. And they had the little song, conjunction, conjunction, what is your function? Oh, yeah. Somebody hit me. Oh, right. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. The word but is a conjunction All right. of the eight parts of speech. Mm -hmm. It is a conjunction. Mm -hmm. And it's linking the before mm -hmm. with the presence right. or the after. Am I with you? Are you with me? All right. And I have, Lord, they're both dead, going on now, but if I, if my uh, fifth grade and my, if my tenth grade English grammar teacher would be here, they'd be jumping up and down. Mm -hmm. Because I, at that time, as I remember them, uh, they were ones that were really, really pushed mm -hmm. proper English. Mm -hmm. Proper grammar, and uh, uh, I, I, one in the fifth grade, she always used to tell us to watch the articles. Watch the articles. Watch the articles. She said, "Don't put the articles in the wrong place." And since I got my my journalism English daughter here, English teaching daughter here, I have to be careful. But anyway, she said, "Watch." The articles mm -hmm. never replaced D for A and A for D. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't pay as much attention. I was trying to, just so I got to get out of the class. Mm -hmm. But what I realized is, anytime you say A, that means that there is a possibility of another. Somebody will help me here. And anytime you say D, that means that that's it. That's exclusive. That's the only one. So if you put A somewhere that ought to be B, you just messed it. Well, that's just like but. But will always come somewhere where there's something at before and something after. Then this word now, it's an adverb. Meaning and telling when or where. It's an adverb, and it's telling us when. And it, the meaning mean is present time, or at once, or immediate, or at this point. Help me, Lord Jesus. So God has put together, if you look at your text, the first two words of Isaiah 43, 1 is, but now, but now. So it has to be something behind the book. Somebody. All right. Yeah, yeah. It has, you have to go behind the book to find out why God said but. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness? All right. And let me tell you what's behind that 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 conjunction book. Mm -hmm. What's behind it is chapter 42. Right. And chapter 42 tells us about the displeasure. God had with Israel over their disobedience. Yes, that's what it tells us. And if he'd have left it at 42, we would be in bad shape. Because what he says in 42 is nothing but wrath. Glory. And the wrath is going gonna, is gonna to happen. They're going to have to go into captivity. But then, but he's letting them know there is a now after the but. Right. Oh, I wish I had someone that could help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thank God every night. Listen to me. Every
every life ought to have a but now in it. I better say that again. Every life ought to have a but now in it. I have. And I thank God I didn't stay back there on the but part. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. I have the now. And the now says to me that the second part is better than the first. Further than our studies here. But now says that there's a turning point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The feature of, of, of Isaiah's prophecy is once you get to chapter 43, excuse me, chapter 43, then 43 1, 44 1, 49 5, and 52 3, all have within them a phrase of the but now. It's either yet now, or after now, or something that, say, that says there is a turning point. And out of all that Israel has been going through, or going to go through, they need to hang on to the turning point. That's what I, that's why, that's why I, I know, I, you know, the, the pandemic and all that, we've all suffered, we've all had this, that, and the other, but I know there's a button I come in. Matter of fact, there already is. Right. And I know that in our lives, apart from all of that, there are situations where it looks like you can't go any further. What shall I do? Yeah. Oh, Lord, yeah. there is a but now. Yeah. Yeah. If you trust him, there is a turning point. Yes, there is. God reassures his covenant. He made a covenant with Abraham. Mm -hmm. And this but now is assuring his covenant. Right. You see, he identifies himself. He says in our text, the law. The law. Are you all with me? Mm -hmm. The law. Right. When he makes this statement, in other words, a lot of people can make statements. But only one can be for sure to back it up. And that's God. So he said, the Lord. Yeah. But now, I said, the Lord. Yeah. And then he goes on and identifies who he's making this a reassurance to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He didn't say, but now, I, the Lord, created the old uh, 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 Egypt, or old Syria, or old Arabia. No, he said, I created the old Jacob. Help me, Holy Ghost. Right. Now, that's interesting. I can't, I, I, I can't die, uh, spend too much time, but if, if you want to know who he's talking about, Jacob is the grandson of Abraham. And the covenant is being passed down. Well, where, notice he says, O oh Lord and Israel. Oh, Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And that's how Israel got its name. I can't give you, I can't uh, spend the time that I want, I'd like to, to tell you all about it. But if you go to Genesis 32, Genesis 32 and 28, where, where Jacob wrestled with the angel, that's when his name was changed. Can I get a witness? So now, God has identified, I'm the one making this promise. I am the one. And you are the one whom I'm promising to. Because it goes all the way back to your forefathers. The second thing I want to tell you about this is the but now is a promise of restoration. Throughout the Old Testament, one thing that, that's, that's weaving woven into all of the scripture is the Abrahamic promise. And that promise is that I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to make you as the sand 
at the sea, at the, at the sand on the sea of the sea. I'm going to make you a nation, and through you will the world be blessed. And he gave it to Abraham. He passed it on to Jacob. I mean Isaac, and then his then on to Jacob, and then from Jacob he sent it to Moses. For when he's called Moses in Exodus chapter three, help me, Holy Ghost. Right. In Exodus chapter three, he said, "I am the Lord your God, the yes. God of Abraham yes. and of Isaac yes. and of Jacob." Help me, Holy Ghost. Right. And then he goes on to Samuel and to David. And David says in Psalm twenty-three, "The Lord is my shepherd." Because he promised me that from, mm -hmm. help me Holy Ghost, from Abraham. Mm -hmm. And then he, now he comes to the prophet, prophets. And every one of the prophets will have some statement about the Abrahamic promise of God. Mm -hmm. God uses conjunctions to connect him with them. But now, I'm connecting you. You weren't there. Those of you of Israel right now, you weren't there when I made it this covenant to Abraham. But I'm making it to you. I'm using this conjunction but to bring forth and the now to bring it forth to you. I created you in verse 1. Yeah, yeah. But now, I created you. And then he goes on and he not only connects the them, he connects us. He connects us with him. He created them, and now he connects us with him. And listen how he does it. He says in Romans 8, in Romans 5, 8 through 10, that while we were yet sinners, <laughs> That's a but now. Yeah. Do y'all see it? Mm -hmm. That's a but now. While we were yet sinners. The same thing that was happening to the Israelites in, in, in Isaiah 43, he's bringing it to us. We're just as sinful as they were. But he says here, while we were yet sinners, yeah. I connected with you. Yeah. I connected with you. I bought the promise to you. Mm -hmm. I bought it through my son Jesus Christ. Who died for your sin. All right. yeah. And then he goes on. Paul writes to the Colossians. And he says now look. There were times when you were alienated. Colossians 1 21. From the promise. You were alienated. From the righteousness of God. But oh now you have been reconciled. Oh, yeah. And how were you working reconciled? Oh, how did you get the butt now? You got it through Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Yes. And as I close, the third frame I want to tell you about is this but now as a declaration of possession. The last three words of this text reminds them, reminds the Israelites who owns them. Every now and then, we need to be reminded of who owns us. Yeah, you are not your own, the scripture said. Yeah, you can't call yourself to get up. You can't call yourself to go anywhere, so to speak. You can't do anything of your own volition. You have to have the, aid, the power and aid of the God Almighty. God says to Israel, you are mine. Mm -hmm. In verse one, yeah. the last three words. Woo! Don't you know that ought to be that ought to be encouraging. Mm. Uh, when, if God come through and said, "You are mine," woo! Mm. I just fall out of the floor. Oh, you are mine. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Well, God has come through and told us personally. Each one, He's told each one of us personally. Yeah. Listen, listen what Paul says in. In, in 2 Corinthians. He said, if any man be in Christ, <laughs> if any man be in Christ, any, it's, God is putting this to each one. If any man be in Christ, you are a new creature. If you are in Christ, you are mine. And 
Then I close with this. There is a divine aspect to this. Not only is there personal, there's a divine aspect. It's a chosen aspect. It's a friend aspect. If you go to John, the 15th chapter, and look at verses 14 through 16, you hear him say, no longer will I call you servants. I'm going to call you friends. Oh, yeah. And in John 13, he says, in 15, 14, 15, 13, he says, greater love had no man than this, oh, yeah, that he'll true. lay down his life oh, yeah, for, for his friends. Yeah, and then the last part of it, of that scripture, says, you have not chosen me. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you haven't chosen me. I have chosen you. Can I get a witness? Thank you, Jesus, that you chose me and gave me a butt now in my life. Thank you, Lord, that while I was yet a sinner, not fit to live, and truly wasn't worthy of your of dying, you created and you gave your son for my sin. On Calvary's cross. And when Jesus died, it was a way of saying, but now, yeah. but now, yeah. all things yeah. are now ready. Thank you. Thank you, God. Early that Sunday morning. Yeah. Thank you. He got up to seal, as I, as I heard the old preacher say, he got up in resurrection to seal the deal. <laughs> yeah, the deal is sealed now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there's a but now. Let me, may I say to you, don't worry about all of this going around. All right. Just know there is a but now. Yes, it is. There is a but now. There is a turning point. Yes. There is an alternative. There is a season coming, my brother and sister. There's a season yeah, yeah, yeah. that only God can give. Yeah, yeah. If you don't hear me say anything else from this pulpit, know this. And the old timers, and I'm always referring to the to the generation ahead of them, they didn't have a lot much education, but they had a lot of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And they used to would say, I wouldn't take nothing All right, for my journey now. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a butt now. All right. I wouldn't take anything for I don't want to go back. Yeah. Come on, Brother Green. Come on. I don't want to go back. Yes, Lord. Because what's ahead of me is greater than anything I've ever seen. Yes, But now, you are mine. God bless you and we keep you. As Brother Green says, we offer to you the salvation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And wherever you are, if you want to put your life and trust in our Lord and Savior, then acknowledge him. Ask him to come into your life and become Lord of your life. As Brother Green sings, wherever you are, as I've said on this presentation time and time again, that you can accept Christ at home, on your job, wherever you're listening. All you have to do is just say, fall on your knees, or just say in your prayer. Lord, I am a sinner, and I want you to be Lord of my life. I want to repent of my sins, and my faith in you is driving me to accept you as my Savior. If you do that, then whenever we re reopen for worship, just come and say, on January the 17th, 2021, I accept the Lord, and we will accept you. May God bless you, may he keep you.
we'll start the lines, all right? May God bless you and may he keep you. Now for the benediction. Unto him that's able to keep us from falling and render us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. Unto the only wise God our Savior, be glory, dominion, majesty, and power. Henceforth, now, and forever, may all of God's people say, Amen. God bless you.